As the title says, there's a major announcement buried in this video that you've all been waiting for. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to the hangar. Glad you can make it. Um, got great news of uh, the progress on the airplane. Again, little fiddly bits. Little things that just, well, you know, need to get done. But a major one for me is, uh, like the, um, uh, for the airplane, uh, I got the firewall in there. It took some doing, cutting and trimming and uh, abandoning what I first thought I wanted for a firewall. Um, let me show you. Let me spin you around here. Let's go, oh, yes, I do have the hangar doors open. It's a beautiful day. People working on their hangers, people cutting grass people flying. Okay, so firewall. Let's move this prop out of the way here. And there we go. Metal firewall there. And, oh, how am I going to do this? Uh, let's do it this way. And back here. Now there's rib nuts holding it down here. And I used uh, nut plates to hold this on. I was originally going to use Zeus fasteners to uh, fasten this down. And then I thought, you know, I'm not going to be getting in and out of that thing on a daily basis. If I need to get in there, screws, nut plates. And then I, I used, again, rib nuts up front. But that's it. This now, um, if there's a oil leak, or, well, it's not oil leak, but gas leak or something, it won't just flood the inside of the airplane. So that was, uh, that took a little while. Um, that aluminum plate on the front. Oh, you know what? Maybe from the other side, I'll show it to you. Look at that beautiful sky. Nice, nice day. Walk around here. Oh, that's a much better view. Yeah. So, yeah, this plate I wanted it to go all the way out to the edge here, and but I couldn't because I have this uh, an, this uh, engine fogging system here. So it kind of ends here. And then I had to trim it with this rubber so that it doesn't have a sharp edge. Likewise over here, trimmed with a rubber. And, and that's it. That just kind of protects the, uh, the front. It's not fully enclosed like I really wanted to, but eh, it works. Uh, that that took, a, uh, took a couple hours to fashion. Um, made a change to that mount because I wanted it higher. And uh, I routed the uh, line, it's not fastened yet, uh, that goes to the front camera that's going to pick up the uh, audio from the headsets. Um, Velcro is now attached here. and These seats don't slide or move at all. They're good. And uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of progress here. Oh, lots of progress on the Emirat too, the other airplane. You notice it's level now. We brought it down from the height. We, we did measure everything. It was, uh, it was great. Uh, we have to, according to the specifications, it must be able to, at that angle of attack, it has to be able to feed three liters of fuel uh, within three and a half minutes. Well, with the fuel pumps running, we it, it, it pumps three liters of fuel in one minute and 25 seconds. So clearly we meet the specification. Um, yeah, so that's that's about it for here. I'm doing a lot of cleanup on, on little things, getting this thing ready to fly. And I'm getting it ready to fly because, drum roll please. Oh, my face is in the shadow here. Hold it. Let's, let's go outside here. Ooh, better. I passed my flight test. Yep. Um, went up with the examiner yesterday, and um, and the or the designated pilot examiner, as uh, as Americans call it, uh, but uh, a little different title up here. But yeah, I went up with uh, with her, and uh, uh, she was great. She was really really good and put me through the paces. Um, I did mess up a little bit. She's pointed out a few things I need to work on. Um, my soft field landing um, needed some work. And also, uh, interestingly enough, you know, I've, I've been flying out of that, that airport, um, well, almost three years now. And 
yesterday, for whatever reason, uh, you know, we were on runway 18, and I was expecting what we call the power line route, where you, you take off 18, you hang a left, you go about one mile, and there's high tension power lines, and you follow that till it reaches a bridge over a river, you turn right, and you enter the practice area. That's the normal route if you're taking off 18. It's what they run all the time. If you're taking off 36 heading south, they make you take a left turn, head towards the, the provincial park, head north to a four leaf clover interchange, and then into the practice area. That's done, well, as far as I've been flying there every time. This time, taking off uh, uh, north, expecting the power line route, didn't happen. Uh, he said, uh, fly direct to the clover leaf. This is, uh, do not ascend higher than a, 2000, uh, a 2100 until outside the control area and uh, uh, call before you uh, change frequencies. Well, they've never asked me to call before I change frequencies, and they've never told me to go on that route. I'm going, okay, I know where it is. Um, it's there. So, fun, fine enough going along there, but I was kind of unsure what the heck's going on. So, anyways, that, that was uh, the first indication that things aren't normal that day. We did all of our packed stuff, the spirals and all that kind of stuff, and slow flight and, and emergency procedures, forced landings and stuff. No problems. Um, and then we did a diversion to another area outside the practice area, no problem. And then we turned around and, uh, and went back to the airport from another location. And uh, uh, he gave me an instruction when I called in from the check-in point, which was outside the controlled area. Uh, we were about four miles outside of the uh, controlled space. And uh, the controller says, uh, clear direct runway uh, uh, three six, no, I'm sorry, uh, clear direct runway one eight. Uh, this is uh, enter midfield, and that was the instruction. I'm going, okay, hang on. If I'm direct to 18, enter midfield, does he want me to cross over the field and then enter downwind and, and circle back? Or So I asked him for clarification. This is a, a clarification, a, a direct 18, uh, and you want me to uh, cross at midfield. And he said affirmative. You know, uh, uh, entered midfield and uh, direct 218. And I'm looking at the instructor and, and I, I look at him and says, I honestly have no idea what he asked me to what to do. Does he want me to cross over the field and then go downward or does he want me to go direct to the threshold? And uh, she says, um, I don't know. <laughs> or something to that effect. I mean, I'm, I'm abridging the whole conversation. There was more involved with this. I, I, I made a mistake with a radio call before, that kind of stuff. So I'm leaving all the that out but um so we're approaching it and uh, and he says uh, uh quebec pop romeo uh uh enter your downwind now okay so i'm not supposed to fly direct to the threshold i'm flying a pattern so i turn left in the downwind and i'm completely confused at this point and uh, my pattern was horrible i'll oh. Sad, sad, sad. And uh, we did a, a stop and go. The first one was uh, uh, short field over an obstacle. Um, and the wind when I first took off was uh, at zero one zero um, and uh, five knots. When we got back there, the wind had changed. I did not ask for a wind check. And he did give some wind information to other pilots, but I was so busy in the cockpit, I, I didn't hear it. The wind had had gone up to 17 gusting over 25. Okay, well, it's a 17 knot crosswind max on there, but the wind direction uh, had, had changed to zero two zero, I believe. So we're still landing on three six, uh, but that means I've got a crosswind factor that I hadn't even thought of and prepared for, and, um, and, and gusty. <laughs> So the first, uh, in you no know, short uh, over obstacle, I landed it. It, it was a little rough. Uh, we stopped, throttle up, take off, over obstacle, no problem. The takeoff, she said, you were perfect. Your landing, on the other hand, were horrible. Um, the second landing, she says, I want to see a soft field landing. So we're flying on there. And at this point, I said to her, says, These, this is not a five knot wind. She says, no, it's not. This is, it's 17 gusting 25. And, uh, and I said, what? And he says, yeah, you said that to another pilot. And I, I, said, I didn't hear it, and I was so focused. So at that point, <laughs> I'm going, okay, I need to add some speed on here because we got gusts. 
I didn't add enough. <laughs> I only added about eight to 10 knots. I should have added 15 knots to crossing the threshold. Normally I cross, cross the threshold at, uh, at uh, uh, 59 knots. And uh, as soon as the runway is made, and drop the throttle and, and flare. Well, I, I crossed the runway at, uh, at uh, 69, 70 knots and, and it was blowing and then the wind disappeared and poof, pancaked it in. Well. Okay, maybe not pancaking, but it was a tough landing. Um, I didn't leave nuts and bolts behind, but a landing I did not like. So we taxied back and, and she, she said, yeah, your two landings were horrible. If, uh, yeah, but, uh, but passable, just. So anyways, yes, uh, now I have to do all the paperwork. I'm gonna walk back into the shadows. My face is probably gonna get all dark. Um, so I need to do paperwork. Uh, today, before I came here to the hangar, I, uh, I had to match up my training log with my personal log. And I did notice I had some errors. There were some flights that I logged my personal log and, as dual, but they were actually solo flights. And I don't know why I did it, but it was just stupidity. So I just, I make sure everything was correct. And for the corrections, uh, because it's a legal document, I can't erase or obscure anything. I just draw a single line through it and put the corrected number beside it. Okay, fine. So the numbers all match, and uh, uh, tomorrow or, uh, or, or later this week, I got to go back to uh, the flying school, and we fill out all the paperwork. Uh, I downloaded the app uh, so I can um, um, register and get my, uh, my booklet pilot license thing uh, registered online and, and take my picture with the app and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, and then they'll give me uh, a, a piece of paper that's temporary, it's good for 90 days, uh, that says I can fly. So by mid next week, uh, end of next week, I'll have the piece of paper in my hand and I can fly my Challenger. Not gonna fly it yet. I have to, um, I have to get some transition training. Um, this airplane flies way different than, uh, than, uh, than what I've been flying. So I need to do a bit of transition training just so I don't hop in it. And I'm completely surprised by what it's doing. So, because uh, I've never flown a Challenger. And uh, so that's, the, that's what's happening. And uh, the transition training, I may or may not be able to video depending on who I'm doing it with uh, and if they're okay with it. Uh, if not, well, then that's just the way it is. So, but it won't be a, a, anything spectacular. It's just him going through the drills. We're just gonna do a bunch of circuits. It's gonna show me the ropes, you know, how much rudder, that kind of stuff, uh, a couple hours in the airplane. And then I hop in mine and that will be videotaped. So it's that close, but I do have my license and, um, and um, Happy days. So there's the long story. I gave you the, uh, the rundown, even though I didn't video it, uh, maybe in your mind, you imagined my storytelling and followed along. <laughs> it was mostly uneventful. Um, and uh, other than those, you know, a couple screw ups on the, uh, the very tail end of everything when, um, yeah, we won't get into that. So that's it for right now. Let's turn you around so you can take one other look at the, the beautiful Challenger, which will be in the air very soon. And uh, now it has a firewall on the back. That's finished. And uh, I just have to put the pitot tube in. I'm not putting that in because it's very susceptible to getting smacked off. I have to make a pitot tube cover that's red with a flag. And I'm trying to figure out how I can make something that'll have a wire flag up top, that uh, like a wire flag up here, that the hello, don't, I'm, you know, so got to do that yet. Uh, putting in the pitot tube is five minutes. Um, and then um, before I even run it up and down the, uh, the uh, runway, just doing a, a taxi testing, I have to calibrate the compass and I got to calibrate the altimeter. And uh, it's not a big process, but it has to get done. And I think I've talked about that on a, a previous video. So anyways, thank you again for following along. I really do appreciate it. And I hit 800 subscribers. Seems like um, every time I you know, release a video, I get you know, a couple of people say, hey, sure, I'll subscribe. So if you, uh, if you can, um, great. Uh, if you can't because your mouse is broken, I'm sorry. But uh, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and say hello in the comments and um, Biggest thing, I passed my flight test. So I'm happy. <laughs> See you in the air very soon. Back here in the hangar again shortly. Bye for now. Oh, and 
for all of those who are still playing hockey, all the teams, Dallas and everything, keep your stick on the ice. I'm still watching. Bye for now.